Okay, now, uh, from, uh, how do we go from an LED to a display? Uh, essentially, there are two options. One is to use a passive matrix display. And in the case of a passive metric display, essentially we have uh, um, one LED for each uh, pixel. Let me just draw a simple nine LED display. So these are LEDs. The, the symbol of an LED is just a diode uh, with a flash. So, we have nine uh, diodes, and uh, these diodes are driven from the um, perimeter. In this particular case, we have uh, uh, three um, rows and three columns, and we have uh, one transistor per each row, plus one transistor per each column. Let me uh, so this is the supply voltage. So with this transistor we drive uh, the three LED here with uh, a second transistor we drive the other three LED in the second column and with the third transistor we drive the three LED in the third column so we have here uh, column 1, column 2 and column 3 of course these transistors are on if uh, the voltage on the base is low. So if the voltage on C1 is low, this transistor is conducting and the, uh, the, the um, anodes of the three LEDs are at a voltage VDD. And then we have something similar for the rows. For the rows. Uh, let me use a, a, a red we put together the cathodes of the three LEDs in the same row and we connect it to for example ground here so this is let's say R1 This is R2. And this is R3. So, again, you can activate uh, each row independently. For example, if uh, uh, R1 is high then the corresponding transistor is conducting and then the cathode of all the, le the LEDs in the row goes to ground ok so uh, this means that for example if we put C1 to a low voltage we activate all the, the, the complete column and uh, once we have activated the column, uh, we, we activate the LEDs in the column that have the corresponding uh, row activated. So, for example, if C1 is low, R1 and R3 are high, then we have uh, uh, um, a, a direct bias on this LED and this LED. Okay, they are on and all the rest is off.
so we can choose uh, uh, typically what to activate maybe it's, it, it's useful to make an example but we can have something like this uh, this is time let's say this is C1 this is C2 this is C3 this is R1 So, for example, if uh, a, a, if at a certain time C1 is low and C2 and C3 is zero, then the first column is activated. And if uh, R1 is high and R3 is high, which is the example that I did before, then uh, let's say, let me color this, this one and this one are activated, okay? Then what I can do is uh, changing after some time uh, uh, the, the voltage on the columns, then in the second step I can activate column C2, this goes to zero and this goes to zero, and then I can choose what LED to switch on. For example, I would like to switch on this and this, which means that I have to put R1 to 0 and then put R2 to a high value and R3 again to a high value. And for example, then I activate the third column, I want to uh, have only this one on, this means that I have to put this on, this Z, uh, no sorry, uh, It has to be low if it's on. This has to be low. This is zero and this is zero. In this case, the third column is activated. I only want to activate the third LED, the third LED. So R3 is on and the rest is off. So I have this picture. Okay. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that actually when you activate C1, only the LEDs in the first column are on, then when you activate C2, only the LEDs in the second column are on. So you never have, you never have this image. You have one column on at a time. But if you uh, uh, go, if you activate in sequence or all the column just for a moment, then your eye does the averaging. So only one column at a time is uh, is on but then you, maybe not, not, not your eye actually your brain does the averaging and you see uh, uh, let's say an average image as it happens when you see a, a laser image on, on, a, on a screen actually you only uh, have one line at a time, but uh, since your brain does the averaging, you see an image on the screen. Okay, please. Because, yeah, be, 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 because if you if you use this uh, architecture, you activate. Uh, I mean, you, you need to do it in a row because otherwise if you have active both C1 and C2 at the same time you have all the, the transistors on the same row that are active uh, you, you need to use one this is important, one column at a time and then for each column you can activate many rows because you have only, on, on, only one column that is active ok so this is uh, uh, um, the architecture of a passive matrix display. It's not uh, very common now because in practice it is, it is useful only for very small displays because since your brain does the averaging you need to put a high current through the LED 
when it is active. And then, uh, uh, for example, if you have 10 different columns and you want to uh, um, have a certain average intensity of the image, you need to to, to um, uh, turn on each LED at 10 times the average intensity that you want because the LED is on only for one tenth of the time if you have 10 columns. Okay, so you stress a lot the LEDs and typically uh, the aging process is pretty fast. Okay, so for this reason it only works if you have a very small display. Uh, in practice, it, it is very convenient because you can see in the display you only have, uh, if you have uh, N times M LEDs and you need uh, N plus M transistors. So if you have, uh, let's say, N columns, and M rows. You have uh, N times M pixels, which means N times M LEDs, and you only have M plus M transistors. So it's pretty simple, and uh, as you will see, uh, the, the more advanced types of display need to use much mo many more transistors. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that the brain does the averaging because we only uh, uh, illuminate, we only turn on one column at a time. Okay, uh, much more common is the so-called active matrix. Let me just show you how the active matrix works. In the active matrix display, you typically need to have uh, at least one transistor per each pixel. So you cannot have the transistors only in the periphery. You need to have the transistors in the middle of the display. Typically you have the transistors below the LED. They are at least one, but in some more advanced types of displays you have five or six transistors per each LED. And this works because the transistor activates the um, uh, activates the pixel and uh, uh, let's say um, also controls the pixel okay. so uh, how does it work let me it's a very um, let's say general concept you have uh, a row and a column in a very uh, similar way of uh, addressing the, the memory as you have for example in a, in a memory uh, when you have uh, um, have a bit line and a word line you need to, un you need to think uh, the type of addressing in a very similar way as you have it in a bidimensional memory array and then at the crossing point you have a transistor and then you have at least a capacitor and uh, the, the reason for this capacitor is to store the voltage for a, a sufficient time so for each pixel at least a transistor 
The transistor is actually called TFT, is a thin film transistor. Thin film transistor. This is important because this is not on silicon, not on, a, on an integrated circuit. This is a transistor which has to be realized on a display, therefore with a technology which is not a common semiconductor technology. It has to be a technology similar to printing. Then I will, I will come back to, to a thin film transistor, plus a capacitor to store the voltage. Okay, so let me just explain how, how it works. In sequence, you address all the pixels. For example, in this case, uh, in order to address this pixel, you need to have the, the column, oh sorry, you need to have the column voltage high, this would be the bit line high, and the row voltage high, which is the word line high. If this is high and this is high, then the transistor is uh, turned on, and then the voltage on the capacitor becomes the voltage that you have on the bit line. Exactly as it happens in a DRAM, a dynamic RAM. We have already discussed this issue because a DRAM works exactly the same. Okay? And then you change the bit line and the word line that is activated in sequence in order to scan all the possible pixels in the display. Okay? So, uh, one possibility is this one when you have uh, you can have in parallel to the capacitor you can have uh, the LED and then what happens is then when the pixel is activated the LED is turned on but when the pixel is not activated there is still a voltage on the capacitor which continues to charge the LED so the LED is first activated and then it's conti it's continuously, uh, it continuously receives a, um, a direct voltage because of the charge which is on the capacitor. So that you do not need to flash one pixel at a time as in the passive uh, matrix architecture because uh, uh, in, you, you store enough charge on the capacitor to keep the light on on the LED for the whole uh, image then of course when the scan finishes it starts again and then you, you, you still have another another type of activation Okay, this is what you need at least then typically you need something more not just one transistor per per, uh, uh, per pixel because you would like to have uh, for example, the, uh, uh, let's say um, you would like to be able to adjust the intensity of the LED and also to keep the intensity constant because in this way the capacitor is just charged and the intensity is reduced as time passes. Then you need to, let's say, pr put additional circuitry in order to keep the intensity of the LED at the value that you want. But uh, 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 what, what I want to stress is the, is the fact that this type of uh, active matrix display, which is the standard today, it is, it is extremely complex because in a, in a, in a phone like this, uh, you typically need to have, uh, probably you have something like 2 million pixels, and then for each pixel, actually... You, okay, we are going to see you have three colors and for each color you have uh, uh, a structure like this. So you have a few transistors per pixel, per two million pixels. And they must be printed on the display on the back of the uh, LEDs if it's an LED display. Okay. And since uh, uh, they need to be on the display, they cannot be normal transistor, normal silicon transistors, they need to be fabricated with a technology that uh, is, is um, 
is usable on large areas. Okay, a large area such as one, such as this one, or such as the one of this, uh, um, let's say, uh, large computer displays. Okay, so a TFT is fabricated with a technology that is very very similar to printing. Different layers are printed one above the other in order to fabricate a transistor. And typically the situation is the following. This is the back. Then you have uh, a tantalum layer for the gate. This is the gate on the bottom. Then then you have another layer of insulator and this is typically the gate dielectric then you need to have a channel if you want to fabricate a field effect transistor and in order to have a channel you have another layer of semiconductor material so semiconductor And then, on top of it, you have uh, two contacts, one for the source, for example, and one here for the gate. Okay, so all these different layers are fabricated with a technology very similar to printing, which means that uh, uh, um, these materials are not uh, crystalline. They are typically, uh, for example, the semiconductor is amorphous silicon, is a type of non-crystalline silicon. With, a very, with very poor properties, it's not usable for making a microprocessor, but it's still good for making a display because it just had to activate uh, a pixel or with polycrystal in silicon. And also, these metals are not actually crystalline metals, but are, let's say, typically polycrystalline metals. Okay? So the, 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 the main property that this technology has to have is that it must be cheap because you need to use it on large areas and uh, also it must be something that you can do at a low temperature because you don't want to because you apply it at the end so typically you need to, to do it at no more than 200 degrees ok this is a thin film transistor so this technology exists for the moment is used for mainly for displays but many other let's say types of uh, wearable electronics or flexible electronics can be obtained with uh, technologies such as this because really you are printing you can print uh, everything a, a, an electronic circuit on a very large um, area of course the performance is very poor so you use it only for specific types of applications okay uh, for example this technology is used for the so called AMOLED you probably have, this is a commercial name also you, you have probably seen it for example, all the smartphones from, from, from Samsung, the Galaxy series from the S3 on, they are using this AMOLED or Super AMOLED or something, but it's, they're, they're just commercial names. But AMOLED means Active Matrix OLED. Okay, that is the, the main technology. So, and, and is, um, it is uh, uh, a pretty... Uh, pretty new and it has uh, very nice uh, uh, advantages as you probably see not many smartphones now use this type of technology very few TVs uh, and very 
very few uh, computer screens because as of now it is still extremely expensive. Okay. Uh, let, there is only one thing that I want to add on this and it regards the color. So typically this is, uh, this is the so-called AMOLED diamond pixel because of course it's a color uh, it's a color uh, display <coughs> so you need uh, green LEDs red LEDs and blue LEDs and you need to arrange them uh, in, a, in a certain uh, in a certain fashion uh, the point is that uh, and, and so there is a lot of uh, uh, let's say innovation also in the type of shape of the various pixels and, uh, and this is for example the, 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 the so called diamond pixel that Samsung is using for its AMOLED just, I want just to, to, to discuss the, with you the, the issue so uh, the uh, number of pixel is uh, uh, the, the high definition uh, uh, typical number so 1920 times 10 to 1080 okay so these are the number of uh, green LEDs now for each pixel of course you need also a red and a blue in order to have all the possible colors uh, if you look at this situation uh, at this uh, pattern you should be able to see that you have uh, half uh, the blue LEDs and half uh, the red LEDs uh, than green LEDs okay so typically you have 2 million green LEDs and then you have 1 million red LEDs uh, approximately no? because uh, this is almost uh, the product uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, 90, 20 times 10, 80 is almost 2 millions. Okay, so you have about 2 millions green LEDs, and then if you look at the pattern, you have half, which means uh, 1 million green, red LEDs and 1 million blue LEDs. Okay. This is due to the fact that the eye perceives the color with a smaller. Uh, resolution that the intensity of light so you do not need as many uh, red and blue LEDs in order to, to, to have a complete uh, colored image at, at high definition a and then of course, of course for each of these uh, LED you, you need to have uh, a, a um, a, a small circuit consisting of at least one transistor, one capacitor and uh, some additional control, control circuits to regulate the intensity and to keep the intensity constant during the scanning okay. typically you have 24 bits per pixel 8, 8 and 8, 8 for green, 8 for red and 8 for blue and in this way you can uh, let's say form the complete image So, uh, uh, this is one option. Uh, this is one option. The option of using uh, an active matrix of organic LEDs in order to have a display. It's not, it's not the most common one. It's, it is probably the most modern one. Uh, uh, and you do not use uh, normal LEDs for this type of structure because, of course, 
for a normal LED you need a crystalline semiconductor which is too expensive in order to build a large uh, large display okay so in practice you can do mm, displays with a large number of pixels only with uh, uh, organic LEDs in addition to this one there is another um, way of fabricating um, displays which is actually the most common one today which is using LCDs and uh, uh, LCDs are still now the most common ones uh, also for example the iPhone uses an LCD the, uh, the most uh, uh, computer displays are based on LCDs uh, and we, we should uh, uh, look at the difference and try to understand what, what, what's in there so what, are, what does LCD mean? LCD means liquid crystal display And uh, uh, so the, the main difference between an LCD and, uh, uh, LED and the LED display is the fact that in an LED display, in order to uh, turn on a pixel, you need to turn on an LED. With the LCD, the thing works differently because the LCD is only able to uh, um, to transmit or block the light uh, coming from a backlight. Okay. So how does the LCD works? Uh, let's, let's discuss first the principle of operation. If we... Uh, consider the, the, the principle of operation of an LCD. We have something like this. We have a solution with, uh, um, let's say, these, crisp, these liquid crystals that are just elongated molecules. And uh, uh, depending on the uh, electric field applied to the solution, this uh, uh, if we put it, we have two electrodes, so electrode okay. in the middle we have a liquid, okay, and then we have some elongated. Uh, molecules if uh, uh, we apply no voltage between the two electrodes the liquid crystals are in this uh, uh, stay in this direction all aligned horizontally and in this way they are able to rotate the polarization of the light in the on state if apply a positive voltage between the two electrodes then the orientation of the liquid crystal changes it uh, uh, becomes in this way and uh, in this case they do not rotate the polarization of the light so here we have light polarization rotates by 90 degrees 
this is something that depends on uh, on, yeah, on on how the, the liquid crystal is made. But let's say we, we design it in order this polarization to be 90. And here we have uh, light polarization. does not change okay this is the principle of operation of a, of, a, of a liquid crystal now what do we do with that uh, first of all you know what is a polarized light uh, probably no, probably I, I should I should mention some uh, So, uh, w w when you have uh, uh, light propagation, you, you, when you have the propagation of an electromagnetic wave, you have, uh, 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 let's say, a, a, a magnetic field and an electric field which propagate simultaneously. And uh, you might have a situation like this, uh, the electric field is oriented in the vertical direction. The uh, the magnetic field is oriented in the uh, in, in this other direction, which is this is perpendicular. And then according to Maxwell's equation, light propagates in this direction with a velocity that is equal to C. So when you have lights propagating from me to you, you typically you can have an electric field in this direction and a magnetic field in this direction. Okay? When the situation is like this, we say that uh, we have a vertical polarization. So the polarization is the orientation of the electric field. This is a vertical polarization. Then you can have uh, a different possibility. You can have the electric field in this direction, the magnetic field in this direction, and the propagation again in, in, in the same direction as before. So everything is rotated by 90 degrees. And in this case, the direction of the electric field is horizontal, and we call this uh, horizontal polarization. Okay. Now, typically, uh, in, in normal condition, if we think about light, uh, light can, can, can be in a in a, in a combination of vertical polarization and horizontal polarization. But sometimes you can play with the polarization in order to, let's say, filter some type of light with respect to the others. Uh, I don't want to go into the details now, but this is the principle of operations of the polarized high glasses. Okay, it's, it's, uh, you, 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 with the polarized high glasses, you filter type of polarization with respect to another and for example you reduce the luminosity of the of, of the sky with respect to the rest uh, now okay this is just a, let, let's say a parenthesis uh, why we, we we why it is important for the operation of liquid crystal displays it is important because uh, uh, we exploit uh, this, uh, uh, the fact that we can uh, activate the rotation of the polarization or, <coughs> not act or do not activate the rotation of the polarization. If we have uh, a, uh, if we have, uh, for example, a light which is vertically polarized at the entrance of the liquid crystal. Then the light, if the liquid crystal is on, at the exit is still vertically polarized. If the light at the if the if the liquid crystal is off, 
then the light at the exit has, has a polarization which has rotated by 90 degrees and then it's horizontally polarized. And then at the exit we can have a filter, a polarizing filter, which for example lets only the horizontal polarized, polarized light pass. And so we, we can select if we allow the light to pass or we do not allow the light to pass. Okay, let me show you a, a, a picture which is probably, uh, so let me, no, let, let me just stress this fact by adding, let's assume that this is vertically, vertically polarized light. So this means that in this case it is vertically polarized. In this case, after the, the, um, the liquid crystal, it becomes horizontally polarized, horizontally polarized. And then, if I use here a, a horizontally, horizontal, polarization filter which means a filter which allows only horizontally polarized light to pass then in this case I have the horizontally polarized light and in this case I have nothing because the polarization is wrong and the light does not pass so and this is actually the principle of operation of uh, liquid crystal displays you need to have uh, a backlight which is uh, I which is always on and uh, is and uh, uh, let's say illuminates all the liquid crystal cells and you're able to let's say let the light pass or block it with uh, the control of the liquid crystal so the, the, pri uh, the, 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 the principle of operation is uh, very different with respect to the LED screen that we have discussed before in the previous case you could turn a light on and off for any pixel in this case you can block the transmission on allow the transmission of a backlight okay now I have uh, uh, an, an, an image which is better than the one that I have used here for, for a liquid crystal display there are several layers we can, we can uh, uh, let's say discuss them together but the, pr the, the, prin the principle of operation is the same that I just said just le let's look at the sequence of layers first you ha we have a, um, a, a polarizer a polarizer is a, a filter in this case, this filter allows only horizontally polarized light to pass. So after this, this filter, we have horizontally polarized light. Light with a very uh, well-known polarization. Then we have uh, the TFT matrix. Because this is an active matrix display, we have a TFT for each pixel. So, at each in, correspond, uh, in, in correspondence of each filter, we have uh, a situation like this: an LCD and uh, a storage capacitor to keep uh, the voltage constant when the TFT is not uh, is not biased anymore. Then we have. Uh, 
uh, no, okay, the, so, some layers just uh, for, for mechanical purposes. Then we have uh, the liquid crystal fluid, and then the back panel and the front electrode are the two electrodes uh, that, uh, that uh, let's say, let apply the electric field to the liquid crystal in order to change the orientation of the liquid crystals. So this is the control. This, this is uh, the front electrode. Let me write here. This is the front electrode. And this is the back panel. So we control for each pixel the voltage between the front electrode and the back panel. Then we have uh, a color matrix, which is just a color filter, because the backlight is white, uh, and then uh, according to the, 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 the color filter, we have a red light, uh, a green light, or blue light. And then we have the front, the, then we have uh, the, uh, uh, the front panel and uh, the polarizer. This is an horizontal polarizer. The, the first one in a, is, a, is an horizontal pol polarizer. The last one is a vertical polarizer. So if uh, for each pixel the voltage between the front electrode and the back panel is zero, then the polarization is not rotated and the light uh, coming from the back, which is horizontally polarized, does not uh, filter through the last polarizator last polarizer okay so we see dark if on the other hand the voltage no 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 uh, I was wrong if no it's not consistent to what to what I said before so, uh, we, we, if it's zero there is a rotation if it's not zero the voltage applied there is no rotation so if the voltage applied between the front electrode and the back panel is zero, there is a rotation of 90 degrees of the polarization, and therefore the light which is horizontally polarized exits from the liquid crystal with a vertical polarization, and then it is seen. So you see a color in the pixel. Otherwise, there is no polarization, you see a dark spot. Okay? So, again, the principle of rotation is exactly uh, as, as far as the, um, the addressing of each individual pixel is concerned is identical to the AMOLED. But in this case, we only control the transmission of, the, uh, of, of each pixel with the liquid crystal. And, of course, it's controlled individually. Okay, that's uh, the main point here. Um, it's frozen. Va bene, eh, facciamo una pausa qualche minuto e poi riprendiamo così io sblocco qui. <ride>